Hi, and welcome to our video for 16.1 Properties of Solutions. So, I guess the very first question we have to ask ourselves is what is a solution? Well, a solution is a homogeneous mixture of substances in the same physical state. Now, normally we think of a liquid solution, for example, salt water, right? Where you have here's your container of water, and there's all the ions from the salt evenly dispersed throughout the water and you can't see them because now they're all in the same physical liquid state. They can contain atoms, ions, or molecules of one substance spread uniformly throughout a second substance. A couple of definitions. The solute is the substance being dissolved. So in here when we think about salt water, the solute is the salt. The solvent is what dissolves the solute. In our case here, it's the water. Okay? Water is generally the most common solvent. So going back to our situation here, the salt is the solute, the water is the solvent, and then the solution is just the salt water. Whenever we talk about a water-based solution, we're going to use the term aqueous. A little review, right? S is solid, G is gas, a script L is liquid, so solid, liquid, gas, and the A, Q means aqueous. So if we think about NaCl, sodium chloride, with the AQ after it, that means the sodium chloride is dissolved in water. As opposed to NaCl with the S for solid, which just means it's the solid particles, the solid crystals of sodium chloride. All right, so then what are some characteristics of liquid solutions? Well, a liquid solution is the perfect homogeneous mixture. Remember, homogeneous means same throughout. As opposed to heterogeneous, which is going to be different throughout. Now, liquid solutions are clear. That doesn't mean it's not having color because they can have color but even if you take uh, some yellow food coloring and put it in water it's clear as opposed to cloudy as opposed to cloudy so it could be colored but still be clear and if you shine a light through it the light it's going to go straight through it because there's nothing floating around for the light to bounce off of. It won't settle on standing. So if you have, you know, here's your salt water and it'll remain completely clear, the salt's not just going to slowly start to settle out on the bottom. That's what that means. If you leave it sit or stand for a while, whatever's dissolved in the solution is not going to just magically settle out. And it'll pass through a filter. So if we were to take this container of salt water and put it through a filter, all of the salt water is going to go through, and it's not like you'll end up with filter paper with salt on it. These salt ions are going to pass right through with the water. Solubility. All right, it's uh, going to be a term that you're going to really become familiar with. And that means how much of a solute will dissolve in a certain amount of solvent at a certain temperature. So if we're talking about salt water again, to how much salt will dissolve in water at a certain temperature. If something has a high solubility, meaning a lot of it will dissolve, we'll refer to that as being soluble. If something has very low or no solubility, we'll usually refer to that as insoluble or not soluble. Now, when we're trying to decide what's going to dissolve and what, we use the term like dissolves like. Now, what the heck does that mean? 
generally it means that polar substances dissolve in polar liquids. So a polar solute and a polar solvent, they'll dissolve. Generally, if it's a polar solvent or a polar solute with a non-polar solvent, it won't dissolve. Kind of getting to the old term, oil and water don't mix. Oil is non-polar, water is polar, so they won't dissolve in each other. Okay, so let's say we have a non-polar solvent like oil. Okay, something non-polar would dissolve in oil. However, things that are polar or ionic, because they behave similarly, would not dissolve. If we have a polar solvent like water, polar and ionic substances will dissolve, and nonpolar substances will not. Now, if you're trying to dissolve things and you want to help speed things along, stirring or heating up speed up the rate at which things dissolve. They don't make more stuff dissolve. You can't stir up water and oil and make the oil dissolve in the water. But something that is soluble, like salt or sugar, if you stir it or heat it up, it'll help things dissolve faster. That brings us to another definition, which is called saturation. A solution is saturated when no additional solute can be dissolved at a particular temperature. So let's say you have a container of water at, I don't know, 70 degrees Celsius. We can only put in so much salt and have it dissolve. Eventually you'll get to the point where you can add more salt, but it won't dissolve. Then it'll just settle at the bottom. Right? Have you ever finished a cup of tea or a cup of coffee? You, know, you finish it and there's a little clump of sugar at the bottom? That means you put too much in. You saturated it with sugar and the remaining sugar would not dissolve. Now, every now and then, if you do things right, you can make a super saturated solution. And that can form when more than the equilibrium amount of solute is dissolved at an elevated temperature, and then the supersaturated solution is slowly cooled. So if we take water, right, and we start adding sugar and add sugar, we heat it up until it all dissolves, add sugar, add sugar. So there's so much sugar dissolved, then when we slowly let it cool, that sugar would stay dissolved, even if it's too much that would normally go in. So like, let's say you tried it to add a certain amount of sugar at 90 degrees Celsius and it won't all dissolve. You heat it up to 95 degrees Celsius, stir it, stir it, stir it, it all dissolves. Let it cool back down to 90, that sugar will still stay in solution. That's called a super saturated solution. An unsaturated solution is formed where more of the solute can dissolve in at a particular temperature. So going back to the uh, sugar water, right? You take regular water, 70 degrees Celsius, and you add just a little bit of sugar, and it dissolves. And there's still room for more sugar to dissolve. To dissolve, that would be an unsaturated solution. All right. Two other factors affecting solubility are temperature and pressure. Generally, and there are some exceptions, but generally as temperature increases, the solubility of most solids increase. Gases are different. As temperature increases, the solubility of most gases decrease. And that has to do with energy. Remember when you think of vapor pressure, right? The higher the temperature, the higher the vapor pressure. That's because gases are trying to escape as they get warmer. Now pressure has no effect on solids at all because they're not compressible. However, for gases, as pressure increases, the solubility of the gas in liquid also increases. 
All right, two more things to take a look at. One is on your reference table, table G, you have these solubility curves at standard pressure. Okay, and as we can see, a lot of these, as the temperature goes up, right, because the temperature goes up this way and the solubility goes up that way. So, with a lot of these, right, as temperature goes up, solubility increases. And ANO3, as temperature goes up, solubility increases. There are some, however, where solubility decreases. All right, and you need to be able to look at this and identify a couple of things. One, identify which substances the solubility decreases, right? We have HCl, we have NH3, we have SO2, okay? We can see with salt, NaCl, kind of increases, but not by a whole heck of a lot, okay? And you need to deter be able to determine at a given temperature how much of a substance can be dissolved. So at 40 degrees Celsius, let's say here, ammonium chloride NH4Cl can hold about, eh, let's say, 48 grams of solute can dissolve in 100 grams of water. And finally, on your reference table, table F is going to have solubility guidelines for aqueous solutions. What does aqueous mean again? Dissolve in water okay so what types of things are going to form soluble compounds well group one ions so anytime lithium sodium etc is in an ionic compound with fluorine or whatnot it's going to form a soluble compound ammoniums nitrates Acetates, hydrogen carbonates, and chlorates are always going to form soluble compounds, so always. All right, now when we look at halides, like chloride, bromide, iodide, they will always form soluble compounds unless it's combined with silver, lead, or mercury. Sulfates will always form soluble compounds unless they're combined with silver, calcium, strontium, barium, or lead so these are on the reference table we don't have to memorize them but we have to know to look for them and you have to remember to look for these exceptions we also have ions that form insoluble compounds once again we're talking aqueous here so it's in water so carbonates are never soluble unless they're combined with our group one ions or ammonium chromates are never soluble unless they're combined with group one ions, ammonium or calcium or magnesium, etc., etc., etc. All right, that was a lot of info at once. Uh, really important to remember a lot of these items. I really recommend going back and watching again, making sure you have all of the stuff written down. There's nothing that was here that's kind of uh, that's not necessary. So if you skip things, make sure you go back and get them down. All righty, that brings us to the end, and I'll see you guys in